growing up, I was into street shit. Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I wasn't gonna be shit. Walk to school. But I always went to Charles Rice, so I had to walk to Charles Rice at X Line Park, and uh, it was just fun. You right. know what I'm saying? We were kids, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like. It was different because when I started going to school out here, mm -hmm. it just was different. Like I, I wasn't really used to going to school with white kids and uh, you know having to interact with them because it just it just didn't happen in the South like that. Right. And uh, but it was it. I mean, it had its ups and downs. But you're a kid, so you're just thinking everything kind of kind of cool. I mean, kind of cool, I mean? right? Till you get to that pinnacle yeah. and be like, oh, okay, this what. Then about. now, I know, now I know where they're going to this house. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know why this house they jumping all, all right. the time. You know what I'm saying? I know what she out. doing on the block. Yeah. I know why you walking there. I know there. why you always out here. You know, once you get yeah. that part out, you know, you look older then, but as a kid, it was it was cool. Right. So, I right, so when you growing up, you know, at that time, what was the musical influence around that time? You know, who was who was you listening to coming up that made you want to say, I, I, <coughs> I like music too, I want to jump into it. Because I know back in that time when I was coming up too in the 80s, you know, rap was new. Yeah. But we was, I was jamming Prince, you know, yeah. all that type of stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, my pops was a, a DJ. Uh, yeah, my pops was a DJ. So he had a lot of records at the house. So. <coughs> I would get his record player, put the records on. Okay. Trying to scratch on them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Getting yelled there for scratching up the records and shit and uh, looping them, you know what I'm saying? Even as a kid, like I started looping records at like six, seven years old. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Just looping records, making beats, you know what I mean? So I had I always had a passion for music. And then, but in the hip hop world, it would had to be Ghetto Boys number one. The Ghetto Boys were like the most influential group for me. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because they were just closer and I just like the way they rap. You know what I'm saying? But then one day, I want to say I was probably, I was young, but my aunt had a friend that was dating some guy that was in this group called the Feel a Fresh Crew. You know what I'm saying? So they took us to a, a, a talent show they did, right? Okay. It was Dr. Rock and Feel a Fresh Crew. And so they get on stage. They start rocking. I mean, the whole place was going crazy. You'd have thought it was like NWA right. or whatever, but they were just going wild. Girls were screaming, they jamming. I was like, damn, for real, these niggas is like <laughs> from here. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah, so I met them backstage afterwards and we chopped it up. I rapped for them. And uh, that's how I was like, man, this is what I want to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got to get involved. Like that, so that was that was probably the biggest jumping out point. You okay. know what I mean? Okay, so at that time it was really the, the uh, ghetto boys, and then shrink them down. You started seeing your local yeah. acts like um, Feel a Fresh Crew. Oh yeah. So at that time, who else in Dallas, or what was the music scene like in Dallas at that time? <coughs> like what was really going on? Like how was people yeah. finding out who was doing music? Who you know where was the spots jumping in? Well, the record stores, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, take it back to the South, Mr. Blues. Like, he, he, we would go on Mr. Blues all the time and look for the posters on the wall or who was coming out. Or a lot of times you would find, like, you know, uh, I mean, I go in there sometimes as a as a youngster and Scarface would be there, or Lil' Jay would be there, or uh, Uncle Luke would be there. You right. know, it's always coming to Mr. Blues because he, he had it all. You know, he was like the hub for music in Dallas, is right there on MLK, right in the South, and um, and it's crazy that this, that history right there how it is. Like yeah. they took it away. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I see they don't remodel that whole little mm -hmm. strip. You know? Yeah, Mr. Blues was a spot, but. The record store, you just kind of was street on, shit. On the wall. Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I wasn't gonna be shit. But I always knew that I would be.